Well, thank goodness that the weekend is finally literally upon us. Long, long week. Uh, good things, though, starting to look up. Almost feel paroled. Uh, we may talk about that at a later date. I don't really know. But uh, right now, what I want to talk about is this Aegis Armory holster. Now, guys, it's Friday night as I do this video right now. So I've had this holster for two weeks. And uh, last Monday, not, the mon not this past Monday, but Monday before last, I was so impressed with this holster after wearing it for only three days, I did a preview of it. Well, after wearing it for the full two weeks, guys, I can tell you that I'm even more impressed with it. I really, really, really like this little holster a lot. There's a lot of things about it that just, uh, they just make it an outstanding buy. So let's just jump into it and talk a little bit about it. Uh, of course, it is an Aegis Armory holster. This is their shield model. And they make a couple different models of uh, holsters. In fact, I've got one that I'll talk about at a later date. But this is their shield. It's a hybrid. And hybrid, by definition, marries two different materials together. In this case, premium cowhide, which is an important point. We'll get to that in a minute. And uh, kydex for the um, sheath or the um, scabbard. And uh, somebody had actually asked me, they sent me a PM, said, can you kind of explain the difference between cowhide and horsehide? And Stephen over at Aegis Armory had a very good response to it. He explained that a lot of companies will use what he calls standard tool leather or not a highly processed piece of leather the way I gathered it to make a lot of their holsters and they'll sell horsehide holsters as an option or an upgrade. Now the benefits of horsehide holster is if you live like in the south uh, where it's um, a lot of humidity and you sweat like a stuck sow out in the middle of the freaking desert like I do, uh, horsehide tends to resist moisture a little bit better okay, than standard leather. The problem with it is that it also is a little bit stiffer so it takes a little bit longer for it to break in and form to your body but once it does it's extremely comfortable. Uh, leather tends to get comfortable a little bit faster. But now premium cowhide, which is what Aegis makes theirs out of, is drum dyed and apparently that is to get a uniform color throughout it and to make the finish very, very pretty. And it's pressed in its process so that it retains a lot of that moisture resisting ability of horsehide, but it all, retains all of the comfort level of leather. When they say that this is comfortable from day one, they're not lying. As I mentioned, they're, I mean, it is dead on. So it is extremely comfortable from day one. So Aegis Army uses premium cowhide and so you have the best of both worlds with that the way I see it. Now, looking at the holster when I first got it, I was thinking, well, it's a little bit smaller, okay? The backing's smaller, but really when I compared it to the crossbreed, the width on it is very, very similar, and the width of the, uh, between the two clips is probably maybe a quarter of an inch total closer on this, but proportionately to the size, overall size of the holster, it's just about dead on. Now, one of the things that I've had a problem with a lot of holsters, whether they be hybrids or other holsters in the waistband, when the clips are close together or they just have one on it, it puts a lot of weight in one spot of your pants. These wide clips on here disperses a weight across a wider area on your, on your waistline and it just makes it more comfortable. Uh, at least that's been my experience with it and that's why I prefer these and this works very, very well. Uh, one of the things about this holster is that it also has the ability to go outside the waistband. The slots are already cut in here. Now, I was going to wear this at the range last weekend. Didn't get to go to the range, but I went ahead and took the clips off, put a belt on it. And I use a Walmart belt, guys. Cheapy. Cheapy Walmart belt. Wore it around the house all day long. I had no problem with it. Uh, the retention was okay. Uh, it worked real well for an outside the waistband. But now, my opinion, this is just my opinion. I would not use this for an outside the waistband holster unless I was using it at the range, which is a very good thing you can have, or maybe a competition holster. The reason being is that for me personally, if I'm wearing something outside the waistband, I like to have a locking or a little bit higher retention. Something like, you know, like a Safari or a Blackhawk where you have to actually manipulate locks in. Uh, maybe something to go strap it over the top. But now that being said, guys at Aegis Armory, they seem to be pretty innovative. Who knows, they may come out with something that you can attach to this or even a version of this that will allow you to have a strap over the top. Who knows, something to think about. Anyway, but in my opinion, that's me. That's the reason I would not use it other than a range or maybe a competition holster for that purpose. Would it work for an outside of Absolutely, no problem with it at all. The retention is very good. Uh, but I think that it is best designed, this one is best used for in the waistband, that's what I will continue to use it for. 
<clears throat> now one of the things that somebody else had mentioned was the angle because it's at a high camp 15 degrees guys this holster was literally made for me because on my crossbreeds and other holsters they come with a lot less of a cant i've always had to move these clips to where i get about that 15 degrees because i wear this thing at four o'clock and when you wear it at four o'clock it's almost like it's a it's almost like it's a natural 15 degree draw right out and into and you know into into your shooting position even if it's uh, outside the waistband right on your hip when you pull it you're coming forward with it because it's a forward motion when you pull you're right into your shooting position so i think that 15 degree cant is a huge plus obviously steven and the guys over a just did a lot of research when they started making this um, and so if you don't like that much cant there's holes on the back you can take some of that out or if you wanted more i guess you could use a leather punch and punch some more holes in there if you wanted to but this uh, bottom part here for me rides at uh, the top of the scabbard right at the top of my pants right top of my waistline that's right where i need it to be it's perfect so i didn't have to change a thing uh, now mike over at looking for me marbles noticed something when he first got his he was talking about this scabbard and how it didn't cover the entire trigger guard and he likes one that does but he could get used to this i don't have a problem with that because the working part of the trigger guard is definitely covered and plus with it like this having this part exposed it does another thing allows you to get a full grip okay uh, this comes with a kind of what a lot of companies will call a combat cut meaning that the entire grip is exposed so you can get all grip on it but another thing it's out of the way of the um, magazine release so if you have an extended magazine release no problems with it getting caught on the leather and accidentally ejecting a mag so another you know great feature of it now one of the things that does happen when you first get this when you first get them in you're like oh man it's not it doesn't snap in doesn't click in it's not very good they say in the, the documentation that comes with the holster uh, they make the retention loose on purpose because as the holster forms to your body and it gets and it becomes more accustomed to you then and as the leather becomes accustomed to the firearm the retention will increase when I first got it in, I've worn these um, hybrid holsters a lot. I'm thinking, okay, well, I can just heat this up and push right here because that's where you increase your uh, retention at. I'll make it a little tighter if I need to, but I didn't do anything to it. I went ahead and took their advice, and uh, guys, he's exactly right again. There's two things that they're dead on right about. The retention does increase. Okay, now this has been foreign to my body a little bit, and uh, holding on to it, that's it. It's not coming out and if I shake it real hard yeah it'll come on out but as a general rule like when it's around your body and I'm not putting much pressure it's not coming out I mean it might slide a little bit but generally it's not coming out okay so the retention does increase when I first got it you put it in turn it upside down just slide right out but uh, the, the retention does increase but again if you wanted more you could heat it up right here put your firearm in there press here let it cool off and it give you some more retention. I just don't think it's necessary. Not for me, especially once this thing's on, your belt's around it, it's not coming out. I've not had a problem with it. The quality of this holster, the rivets are in good. Um, guys, the quality is, uh, is impeccable. It's on the level of anything that I've seen. Uh, another good thing about the Aegis Armory holster, guys, is the price. This setup right here, pay an extra $2 for the blood red, but you get black on black or something, is $50. I think this holster as it sits right here is $52 plus shipping. Price is fantastic. And like I said, the quality and the workmanship is just unbeatable. Uh, it's as good as any that I've ever seen. And they got a really cool logo too, I think. So, uh, my impressions of the um, Aegis Armory holster. I mentioned before, do I think that it would ever replace this? Now, you guys know how much of a humongous crossbreed fan I am. I actually had some moron uh crossbreeds a rip off and you can get one really really good mj or whatever it is for 30 bucks well you know maybe maybe not but i'm going to tell you this much right now crossbreed is a fantastic company their customer service has been fantastic they've always treated me really really well and i've had nothing but good luck with their products i really really like them and i've always come back to these i explained this before I've tried other ones i've always come home to this because nothing has ever beat this until now I am now switching exclusively to Aegis Armory and the waistband holsters, period. 
So Steven, here's the deal, bro. As I know you're still waiting on those uh, XD molds to get in. As soon as you get the Springfield XD subcompact mold in, I want the first one off the line, bro. Chocolate brown uh, leather, blood red scabbard. And as soon as you get it in and get it done, you let me know the check's in the mail. Uh, and I will be purchasing one for my uh, officer size 1911 shortly as well. Uh, it did something I did not think it would ever do. It has impressed me to the point that I will be replacing my crossbreed holsters. Now, I'm not getting rid of these guys. I'm not throwing them out. I'm going to keep them around. And every now and then, you know, I've got an old pair of shoes you like to put on every now and then. I'm going to pull this out and probably put it on and wear it around. But this is now my go-to holster. I believe in them that much. So, Steven and the boys are definitely on the right track. If you want a good hybrid in the waistband holster that's got a good size footprint, but it's not too big and it's not too small, even though it appears to be at first, but it's not, it'll don't let it fool you. The link is below. Check those guys out. I don't think you can beat it. This, in my opinion, is the premier hybrid holster on the market today, and I don't think you can beat it. That's my two cents. There it is. Hope you guys enjoyed the vid. We'll talk to you later.